Word Up. Welcome to Word Up. The vision of Word Up Ministries is to receive Yahweh's word in a way that there is no other way to go but up. Word Up. be on to you and yours. All right, so we're ready to start a new study tonight. Hope that you're ready. Um, it'll bless you really good. Something different. Some may have never uh, even studied the, the realm of numbers as we have done on the past two weeks. Uh, hopefully you were able to understand somewhat how special numbers are to God, what they mean. And if you were able to uh, take a look at your birth date, um, and whatever number dominates, either the highest number or the number that's, you know, second, or that's comes up more than more than twice, once or twice, uh, those are numbers telling you about yourself. It's that that would be more or less your number. If your name repeats some of the same numbers, it's telling you, again, those numbers represent a lot of who you are, what you're about, and. It helps you to get a little insight about yourself. Um, I was sharing a little bit about my, my number, of course, my birthday, uh, uh, September, and again, uh, nine being the largest number. That would be my number. And then, of course, the first uh, name, my first name, and my middle name amount to nine letters. So, again, it helps you to understand yourself a little better. It helps me to know that nine, again, that, that number of judgment to judge things finished. Again, Jesus at the ninth hour said it is finished. He judged everything finished. And so I was glad to learn that about myself that, you know, when I'm done with something, it's a wrap. I'm done. So hopefully you can look at the numbers in your life and find out which one dominates your life because it will help you to learn some things about yourself. All right. So, again, we start a new study tonight, the spiritual significance of colors, which, again, is going to be really interesting. And just to keep you involved and to know what's upcoming, we'll, we'll make sure you know what studies we'll be coming into uh, each time we come together. So you can have, you know, that to look forward to and maybe even prepare for it. All right. So uh, we're going to pray and go into our study. Before we do, uh, just a reminder, starting January, we're looking for our SOS uh, sponsors are sponsors of streaming. You can sponsor a class like tonight as well as a Sunday morning worship service and we look forward to uh, your sponsorship. So again, call our 800 number, go to our website or see us on Sunday morning and take out a form and become one of our sponsors. We look forward to working together with you. Our sponsors will be announced starting January at the beginning of each class and at the beginning of morning worship services and at the end of each class and at the end of our morning worship services. So make sure you get your name in, uh, maybe just a, a group of you or maybe a family wants to get together and sponsor a class or service. It'll be a blessing to you and you're helping to get the word of God out to a lot of people, to many more people than we can reach of ourselves. We are using the technology to the advantage of the kingdom, and that's what it's for, and that's what we're using it for. So we invite you to join us and be a part of it in Jesus' name. All right, hopefully you've gathered, everybody's in their place, and we're going to pray and go into our study. So, Spirit of the living God, we are so grateful for your presence and for your teaching and leading us. Thank you that you never leave us, that you're always with us. We are never alone. We are never left to ourselves. But your presence is with us. Our, your guidance leads us always. You teach us all things. And we are so grateful and we thank you for that. And so bless now even our studies tonight. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Let someone see in a better way. Let someone understand in a better way that the will of God be done in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. So now tonight we will be teaching from our spiritual warfare book, 
uh, Universal Word Center Spiritual Warfare book. Look, if you don't have this book, it's still available, and we want you to get one so you can follow along with us. I like the advantage of using our books because then you don't have to write and take a whole lot of notes. It kind of frees you up so you can listen and really get a little uh, more out of the study. Also, if you have our book on colors as well, we'll be using it also alongside uh, with this um, as a study guide. So, both of these books are available. If you don't have them, we encourage you to get it because, again, you can just kind of follow along and it uh, allows you to, to not have to worry about taking notes. So, bless you tonight. Let's get started on the spiritual significance of color. I'll never forget when the Lord just kind of dropped this in my spirit to do it. I thought, wow, this is really unusual. I don't know if anyone would be really interested, you know, in learning about colors. Well, it was so, uh, went over so well. We got so many requests, so many people learned and, and uh, began to gain from it that we, we actually put a book together. And um, that's what we've been doing ever since as far as uh, colors and numbers are concerned. We put it in writing so people could have access to it because you'd be surprised how important these little things are to God. Whereas, you, you know, when you get so religious, see, religion will wipe out the things of God because it's really all about, you know, man-made stuff. But the things of God, only he could create them. And everything he has made has a spiritual significance. Everything. Everything. Not only is it significant spiritually, but it has a purpose. So let's go into the Word of God. Now, in your spiritual warfare book, I am on page 20. Okay, and if you have your book on colors, the law, of, uh, laws of life for colors, then I'm on page six. So that way you can find where I am and follow right along. So let's start out. Colors, what do they mean? What do they really mean? Uh, I'm in my book on colors. Uh, what effects do they have on you? What do they tell other people about you? The colors you favor are not by chance. And I really want you to take notice of that because sometimes people say, oh, well, what's your favorite color? Well, it's more of who you are than it is what you like. And that's important to understand because a lot of times we don't know ourselves as well as we should and we don't pay enough attention uh, for that matter. And we think just because we like something, well, that's about it. Well, that goes a lot further than just liking it. It's a part of who you are. It tells a little bit about you. So, uh, even the colors that you favor, all right? Uh, we definitely have certain colors that attract us. You're attracted to certain colors more so than other colors. And other colors, uh, you, you don't even tolerate. There are certain colors you just don't, you'd rather not be around, all right? So colors, the colors you choose to wear or surround yourself with are expressions of who you are. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, if you like a certain room to be a certain color, then it expresses that's something that's telling you something about you. So, yes, everybody has a favorite color, but it's more of who they are than it is what they like. All right, so uh, what is your favorite color? What's your preference, and why do you like that color? Uh, we're going to learn that to hopefully tonight. We can get some insight on the law of colors. It's a law because it comes from God, and everything God does is legal because it's his creation. He made it. He did it. Uh, let me give you just a brief scripture again on the book of colors. I'm on page eight. <clears throat> uh, let's see, Proverbs 16 and 4 in, in uh, the book, and then I'm going back to my spiritual warfare book in a minute. Uh, but Proverbs on, uh, 16 and verse 4 says, The purpose of God always prevails. I so like that. It goes on to say, Literally, uh, the Lord has made everything for its own purpose. So th to me, that is, you, you can't even say it any better than that. Again, Proverbs 16 and 4, the Lord has made everything for its own purpose. Even it goes on to say, even the wicked for the day of the evil. So everything has a purpose to it. I mean, to, when it gets right down to the fact that even the, the people that are doing what is against God, that there's a day even purpose and set for them. Nothing's going to be a coincidence. It doesn't happen like that. But to know that colors, everything that he's done, it's for a purpose, made me very interested in following through with this study. All right. Proverbs 19 and 21, the purpose of God always prevails. 
goes on to say, many plans are in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand. All right. And so, um, again, these are just some scriptures to highlight what we're going to be talking about. Revelations 4 and 11. I'm still on page 8 in the book on colors, my book on colors. Uh, Revelations 4 and 11 uh, says simply the dist. It says, thou didst create all things, and because of thy will, they were and were created. Okay, they were and they were created. God's purpose can be seen in color. So everything he did was with a purpose and for his will and for a reason. All right, uh, let's see, I think one more. All right, so for now, I'll just put my book on colors to the side. Let's go to Spiritual Warfare book, those of you who have that. So colors have, uh, color has spiritual and natural meaning. Of course, everyone knows that. Color has the power to express, to alert, and to prevent. Okay? So when you realize that many times you don't even need words. In other words, if I, if I look at a stop sign, yes, the stop is the letter stop, but that red is alerting me. That red stop sign or that bright orange, whatever color it is, it's alerting me. It's telling me that I need to stop. So colors are very significant, and, and men have certainly learned to use them to uh, our advantage. All right? So your color presents your attributes, and I think that is so important. Okay, the color is much like you and who you are. Okay, you express yourself and your own personality through your colors. Okay, watch this now because it's so important. Uh, again, I'm on page 20 in the Spiritual Warfare book for those that you are following along. Your mood and attitude can change around certain colors. Did you know that? I've certainly watched it in children, certainly in my training, uh, working with children in early childhood development. Uh, there were very specific colors that we would avoid having in the classroom because they would trigger certain behavior problems from children uh, at that age. Because remember now, children, they're still processing. They're still learning how to grow. So uh, certain things, they don't know how to control it or process it. Like, you know, once you're an adult, you learn how to do those things. But even some adults don't and, and are not even as aware of it. But the power of colors is very serious when it comes to that. So uh, certain classrooms, especially if you're dealing with special needs children, uh, the colors are crucial to how, what kind of day they're going to have and whether they're going to even be able to sit in that classroom, you know, for a certain amount of time. So it's very important to understand that mood changes and, and behavioral uh, uh, stems from colors, okay? Because anything God does is with a purpose, that's the thing. So colors also express God's personality, okay? Um, it reveals life and death. Emotions ride on the challenge of colors. So surround yourself with different aspects of colors because it may help you, okay? And you can explore colors. Find out what colors make you feel better, you know, about yourself. Because, again, this is to, to, to realize that if God you know, made everything with a purpose, why wouldn't you want to use that to your advantage? Um, you know, you could, uh, certainly when you decorate, how you decorate your living room or your bedroom or even your kitchen, uh, whatever those colors are, it's, it's a part of who you are and what makes you feel better. And that's real important, especially, you know, nobody wants to get up every day and, and just look around and feel miserable. And if you are, maybe you need to check out the colors uh, that you surround yourself with. All right. Now, one of the things you learn uh, about colors, uh, you can explore colors, but you cannot create. You say, oh, well, I can mix certain colors. Well, they remember, they're already colors. So <laughs> you're already mixing them. You may be exploring with them and discovering things, but because colors have already been created by God, you can only work with them. You cannot create them. All right. Uh, sunsets reveal certain shadows that are already there. Okay, and many, many colors that we don't see now, of course, in the long run, we will see. Uh, in, I think in my book, I talk about how many color cones are in the eye, iris of the eye. Uh, I think all, probably a, a million, 
So if those cones are there, that's how many colors are available to you, even if you don't see them. It just it, You just haven't discovered them yet, but they are there. In, in other words, I've read this book on heaven, and it says there in the realm of heaven are colors that you've never seen before because the earth cannot contain all of God's creation. But in the realm of heaven, where all creation stems from, are colors and, and glorious things that you, your eyes have never seen before. All right. Every purpose of God is driven by God. So color can become a color camouflage so it can protect or attract the purpose of increase. So uh, understand color expresses the glory of God as well. Uh, Exodus 28 and 2. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and for beauty. So God loves glory, doesn't he? He loves beauty. He loves things that are colorful and bright. It's a part of his character. It's a part of who he is. All right. So here is where the expression of God is being revealed uh, through the personality of God and what he likes and what he enjoys. Okay. Colors do affect your life and your personality. Okay. So senses are attracted and persuaded by colors. Your senses, your five senses, all working with the realm of colors. Okay, color does come from God and has natural and spiritual purposes. Uh, one of the original realms, when you first, I'll give you a couple of scriptures that may be not in your books. Um, you know, in my studies, I always write down more to add to, especially when I'm preparing for study. So in Exodus 25, uh, chapter 25, verses 3 and 4, you see the preparation of the tabernacle. And Moses is told by God, you know, to uh, begin to put the together the tabernacle after the pattern uh, of the things in heaven, as it's also ex expressed in Hebrews. Uh, and he tells them to bring the colors, the blues, uh, and it, you'll see a word like um, scarlet or crimson, that means red, uh, and purple. These colors are specifically mentioned uh, for the you know building of the tabernacle to bring in. In most churches today, will have those colors in them. They'll definitely have some red carpeting or they're going to have some red drapes or some purple or a, a lot of blue. Most of most churches that I know do have blue, especially blue carpeting. Uh, that stems all the way back, you know, thousands of years ago. All right. When God first gave the instructions because he wanted color because why those colors express something. And you'll see that when we go through each one of them, those colors mean something. All right. One of the first places we come into the realm of colors is in Genesis 9 and 13. I think everybody knows uh, Genesis 9 and 13. It's the promise of a rainbow. Uh, after the flood, God makes a covenant with Noah. It's called a, the Noahic, uh, Noahic covenant where God uh, promises or he makes a covenant with Noah or with mankind to never, you know, destroy the earth with water with flooding and, and and so and it was very necessary for them to do that because think now after this this flood where everybody was literally wiped out other than what God had instructed Noah to you know save and and you know uh, literally everything is gone so now rain had made its interest into mankind so just think had he not given this rainbow this promise of never destroying the earth again with water. Every time it rained, people would panic. <laughs> they would think, oh my God, it's going to happen again. And so uh, that had to be a part of, you know, the understanding. And what? how would he do that? With colors. Because anybody looks at a rainbow, you know, the first thing he says, oh, look at the rainbow. And it's so beautiful. And the colors are bright. And they're glowing. And But, but that's also a sign of of God's covenant to the earth, to man, to never destroy the earth with water. I remember a couple of years ago, I think it was 20, 2012, when this big movie came out and it's about the world being destroyed with this major flood and this tsunami and all this stuff. And I'm, you know, and I, I'm really literally different ones, especially family members, different ones are saying, you think that's going to really happen? Could that ever happen? I'm thinking if you knew your Bible, you would never be intimidated by movies and things of that sort because again, when God makes a promise, it's good to go. 
he will never destroy the earth again with water. And so it is done. And again, what, what's one of his best ways to show that? With the beautiful bright colors of a rainbow that assures you that this is the promise of God. And guess what? Every day, somewhere in the world, there's a rainbow. Because every day, somewhere in the world, it's going to be raining. And the assurance of that covenant is that rainbow, that those beautiful colors that God used to seal the covenant deal. All right. I'm going to skip down just a little bit. So again, colors, they set the atmosphere. So a certain way that you want things to be. I remember when I would set up the classroom uh, for the um, children that we were teaching at the time. These were preschoolers. We also did kindergarten. I did a few other grades. But we understood that the preschoolers were the most important because setting the atmosphere around them was setting the atmosphere for their life. And parents could learn that at an early age for your children, the atmosphere is crucial to your child's behavior and how they conduct themselves. All right. So color signifies uh, the signals or the codes to heaven. They send codes to heavenly. They also speak into the spirit realm. Okay. Uh, it, it is a destroying factor against outer darkness. Certain colors are literally destroyers uh, in, in terms of dealing with spiritual warfare. And we'll show you how that works as well. So... Um, Let's see, the prophetic voice of color speaks to those things that are to come. So colors are also prophetic. Uh, again, the rainbow is one of the first prophetic um, codes and, and signals that we receive, uh, it, it, again, in Genesis 9, uh, that this is how it's going to be from now on. So that's a prophetic uh, realm speaking uh, through the realm of colors, okay? All right. Also, our apparel gives glory to God. How we dress, how we conduct ourselves in, in terms of, uh, you know, think, well, God doesn't care about what anybody wears and so on. So you'd be surprised how personal and how concerned he is about every area of your life. Okay? All right. Acts 17 and 24 says, and I'm at the end of the page of 20, page 20 in your spiritual warfare book, Acts 17 and 24 God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands. Okay? So when we don't understand the purpose of things, we'll abuse it. Understand your temple is literally the temple of the Lord. He does care about what you wear. He does care how you conduct yourself, how you carry yourself. It's very important. All right, when you, when you dream, and this is one of my favorite questions because uh, after this study, we will be going into dreams and visions. We're going to teach you how to do a vision board, all those wonderful things. That is going to be a most powerful prophetic teaching because it teaches you how to literally prepare for what's to come in your life, and it will happen in Jesus' name. All right, but, but do you dream in color? And if I've never asked you that question, then this is the first time I'm going to ask you. Do you dream in color? I've always uh, started the, the study of dreams and visions with that question because according to scientists, most people, majority of people, in other words, they're saying almost everybody dreams in black and white. And if you've ever seen the illustrations and little depictions on televisions and different documentaries and they're trying to depict a dream, You'll see it kind of in a fuzzy black and white, and they're trying to show you this is how most people uh, dream. And I, I've, I've been doing this for years, and so I know it's got to be something significant about dreaming, uh, you know, because if you dream in black and white, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But when I ask this question to believers, okay, those who have received Christ as their Savior, and have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them, as we just read, they almost always say, I dream in color. And that is really, now to scientists and to doctors and those who have done these studies for hundreds of years, ooh, that's rare. But 
believers, from what I understand, they dream in color. So I'll take a minute and let you answer your question or answer or, or respond to those that are around you or respond just, just you and me. Because when I learned that, you know, yeah, I do dream in black and white sometimes, but most of the time I remember the specific colors in that dream. And I thought to myself, is there anything significant about it? I think it's because the Holy Spirit lives within us and we get insight on things that others will not get insight on. Dreaming in colors is so powerful because it's prophetic. All right, it's not the norm, okay? A dream can change your entire situation. It really can. I experienced that personally. Go, okay, so colors are symbolic and colors will always enlist a response or cause you to respond. Colors complements or distracts. Colors classify military and medical alerts. Remember, they all, all these people have specific colors that they wear, the specific uniforms, okay? Offers of the law, okay? There, there's even uh, television shows, weekly shows. Um, I know it's something to do with blue. I don't remember the exact name of the show, but I know it's referring to officers and it's referring to blue and so on and so forth. Colors are significant or, or nobody would bother. Why would they bother? Everything would just be, you know, in grays or black and whites because they really do shape our lives, okay? All right, even every skin tone comes from colors. Color was created on purpose, with purpose, for your purpose. There are nine basic colors, okay? And all are derived from three basic primary colors, okay? So color is what you are not. Let me say that again. Color is what you are not, what you like. It's what you are. Colors are what you are, not what you're like. Okay, so uh, again, this is coming from inner. It's more of an insider concerning you. And, and that's why a lot of times people ask you, and they don't even realize why they ask you what's your favorite color. They think they're just trying to find out some information. But the truth is, uh, it, it reveals far more about you than you're able to tell them. So you focus on the meaning of color and not what you like. The word of God is meant for application. So even when we learn about these colors, you're going to learn how to actually apply them to your life. I yet have testimonies from people, once they took the study, learned the colors, what each one meant, how to apply it, you know, from a spiritual understanding, and they have total victory, and it was just amazing, and, and we, we have those, uh, you know, testimonies to this day. So let's begin with the color of white, okay? White represents victory. That's what it means. Victory. White is the purest of all colors. It is the color of radiance. It transmits or reflects light containing all of the visible rays of the spectrum. Okay? All colors emanate through the color of white. So where you're thinking it's absent of color, it's really full of the reflection of all colors. So rather than absent of color, this is what we want you to understand because when we say it's pure, it's pure because it has the purest shade of all colors. Okay? Uh, let's see. I'm going to skip it. I want to read the whole thing because we don't have time. White describes the glory and the majesty of God without limitations of being one solid color. Its purity reveals prophetic destiny, which we'll read some scriptures to show you that. Uh, it, it gives directness. Solid gives directness, meaning it's very specific in what it says. Okay? Uh, its strength declares the total power of all victories. I'll say that again. The strength of white is what literally pronounces, it declares the total power of, of all victories. All right? Now, one of the first scriptures, uh, Revelations 20 and 11, a lot of people don't understand this scripture because they've already, they for so many years, have made it out like it was for people. But this is a victory of God. So that's what we started with Revelations 20 and 11. It says, and I saw a great white throne. Well, that white throne represents God's victory against the enemy. The great white throne is not a judgment throne for people who are believers. It's for unbelievers. It's not for those. It's God's victory against evil and those who refused him. All right? 
So just kind of understand that. Okay, and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away because they didn't want to see him. And there was found no place for them. So that's a, a judgment for unbelievers. Daniel 7 and 9, I, it's a judgment for unbelievers. Let me just be very clear, but it's a victory for God. All right. Daniel 7 and 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Again, the victorious realm and the greatness, the majesty of God is expressed many times in the color white. Revelation 6 and 2. And I saw and behold a white horse. Again, this is the return of the Lord. It, it's, he returns in triumphant victory. Remember, he comes humbly on a donkey because donkeys represent peace. They do not represent war. But when he returns on a white horse, horses were representation of war, meaning he seals a deal in terms of what has already been prophesied. And he that sat on him had a bow and a crown, was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. All right, that'll be in the final days in the end. White is the grand finale of God's chosen. That's Wonderful for us to look at. Revelation 7 and 9. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number. See, so next time somebody argues with you about there's only 144,000, you know, don't, don't argue with ignorance. You know, that's someone who doesn't know. Revelation 7 and 9 says, After this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number. Okay? That's a lot. <laughs> of all nations. Look at that. And kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white. That is our victory. That's our time. With white robes and palms in their hands. All right, so it shows you the glorious victory that awaits you, and that's what it speaks to. All right, uh, Revelations 3 and 5 says, He that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in what? White. So you're getting the picture now. White is a color of victory. Okay? White raiment, it says, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess. Okay? In other words, that he is mine and I am his. So the color, it's also the color of true worship. Second Chronicles 5 and 12. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph and of Haman and Jatham, with their sons and their brethren being arrayed in white, with white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets. So see this glorious realm of white. I believe it's one of the reasons why um, we wear white a lot in different services. And I, I remember sharing with a person who had a upcoming court date, very serious court date, uh, and they were praying and believing God to just finally come to an end. They had been in and out of the courts, and this thing was just going on and on and on. And uh, she had my book on, on colors and had read it and, um, you know, asked me, you know, about the color white. I said, if I were you, I said, I would go in that courtroom every day wearing white. I would put on a white t-shirt, white jean, doesn't matter, doesn't have to be fancy or dress up. It's just the color itself that will emanate from you and speak into that spirit realm and cause that victory. Do you know when she went that last time, that thing was thrown out of court, she was free and total victory. And was it just that? I don't know. All I know is that I shared with her, I know white represents victory. And I know many people, I, I don't have time to share all the testimonies, especially right even in Word Up Ministries, that have had very serious situations and they wore white until that thing came to an end and they got the victory. I encourage you, don't learn this out of just religious, what, what is that, you know? If you can't apply it, and use it to turn things around. Why bother? God gave these things for a purpose. We have got to stop all the religious practices and all the ceremonialism and you know, all the tradition and stuff and just 
you know, realize that what God does has purpose to it. It's not just to sit around and act religious. That That's just idol type worship. It does nothing. It means nothing. And I myself have I've gotten into situations. I said, I am going to wear white and I put on white every day and wore it until I got the victory. So I'm just saying, if you're going to learn about these things, you may as well apply it. May as well, you got nothing to lose, that's for sure. Well, what if it doesn't work? Well, what if it does? You see? So again, it's something that you need to take and apply it by faith, okay? Because these things we need to learn by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Let's go right now to, I'm on page 21 with your spiritual warfare book. Let's go to the color black. Now, this is a very interesting color because, come on, for so many years, black was supposed to be so spooky and so negative and, you know, bad luck, a black cat and, and foolish stuff like that. See, the world, that's the world stuff. Let's not take the world's information. They didn't come up with colors, okay? God created colors. Why, why don't we take a moment now and find out the real meaning of this wonderful color black. Black is the color of judgment, Okay, it also represents strength. It also means authority. In it are all nine basic colors. Now, if you remember last week, we just talked about nine. Did we say nine was the color of judgment? Uh-huh. So look at how these things work right together. So here is black now, which is also a color of judgment because it has, it, it makes up from all nine basic colors. It expresses the highest degree of unity is what black is about. From the Hebrew word kumar, K-U-M-A-R, it means to search for, to inquire, diligence, equal justice. What? Yes, equal justice. Black appeals to the deep place of attention. Now, when I say equal justice, let me just stop right there because most courthouses, you go in that courthouse and that judge, when they say all lies, and that judge comes out, what does he have on? A black robe. In most cases, I know they've gotten a little more contemporary nowadays, but most of your, you know, real serious courts, you look at the Supreme Court, they all have black robes on. You know, any serious situation, they're going to have a black robe on. It rep represents justice. It also represents judgment. And it represents the unity of what needs to take place there in terms of oneness. Black appeals to a deep place of attention and passion, okay? It's also considered a very sexy color. Yes, it is, because most ladies, everybody wants a little black dress, okay? And most lingerie started out, and they have other colors now, but mostly early on, lingerie was, most lingerie was black. Some of you might remember that, <laughs> and still is. Your, 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 your most expensive lingerie shoes are going to be black because it appeals to those passions and that attention, Okay, call love, okay? It is a solid, unified realm of all colors in earnestness and unmistakable in statement and judgment. And it is. I mean, if you want to represent the realm of authority, and, and when we uh, minister to ministers and when we have our, uh, our summits and trying to think of our conferences where we're teaching and dealing with ministers and teaching those who are pastors. You know, I, I encourage, I said, you know, every, especially, especially men, of course, but especially women, because if you want to be taken serious, you got to know how to dress and, and conduct yourself. And I always say that when you're in a situation where you really need to leave a good, solid impression, a nice, neat black suit will say it all. It represents, and you know that because if you, see, when you see someone in a black suit, you take them serious. You do. You take them serious. Uh, it, it's a very conservative look, um, but mostly it's authoritative. It, it looks like a place and it deals with authority and that's what black is for. And I believe that every man of God, every woman of God ought to have a good black suit now and a good white suit. <laughs> okay. It'll bless you. All right. All right, let me go on. Hold on. It's, uh, so black has authority over everything, and, and it really does. It speaks to sin and points out the direction of death. It is the means of mystery. It hides and it covers. All right, Psalms 18 and 11. 
He made darkness his secret place, his pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the sky. So even in God's private time, you know, he's dealing with black. Love confers, I'm sorry, love covers the multitude of sin. Multitude equals all colors here. There is peace in darkness. That is why we close our eyes when we sleep, okay? And our, our bodies require that shutting down, that, that closing out, that, that blackness, all right? Let's go to the color. There's so much more. If you have the book on colors, it goes into a little bit more detail. I, I don't know if I can rotate between the two of them. It would take too long. And we want to get through as much tonight as we can so that next week when we finish up, we'll go right into our next study. Okay? All right. But black is a very powerful color, and I want you to see it in the light that it really is. It had nothing to do with no bad luck or any of that stuff. That's the world. That's that failing Babylonian system. Whereas we, you know, listen to what they say, and you'll miss out on the significance of it. Like I said, if you got a serious situation coming up, uh, interview, job interviews, you know, uh, again, things that you really want to be taken serious, you need to put on a nice, neat black suit and go for it. All right, the next color is brown. All right, so the color of brown is a color of serving. It, it's servant. It, it, it's servant. It serves, okay? It's warm and earthy and relates to creation, okay? It's not a color of authority, but of servitude and in need of direction, all right? The earth serves man. It's predominantly brown, okay? Serving is sacrificial. People that serve in meetings, uh, that serve in meeting a need within themselves as well. Uh, Genesis 30 and 32, he says, will pass through all thy flock Today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle and all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and the speckled among the goats and of such shall be my hire. This was Jacob when he was literally growing his flock. So, you know, because his father-in-law Laban kept cheating him, but he was a cheat too. So <laughs> sometimes you do really reap what you sow. But that's not the point here. The point is using the realm of cattle as serving, and again, the majority of your cattle is going to be brown. Again, it's an earthly color, and they serve, you know, the animals' uh, kingdom mostly brown because they serve. They're here for us, and literally, when you are in a, a serving mood, you know, you, you won't even realize you, you're wearing something brown or you're put on something brown, not even knowing it. And I know brown is not one of the most popular colors, but it's certainly a humbling color. And if you need to humble yourself, then you need to put on something brown and go find something or someone to serve and help calm that arrogance of your flesh down because that is what brown does. And it's a wonderful color to help you to, you know, build a better character for yourself. Orange, let's look at orange. So orange is a universal color, and you'll see that on a lot of our materials, a lot of our flyers and things that we put out uh, because we believe that you need to be able to reach everybody. Universal means you can reach everybody. One of the things that we strive to do in the ministry is to teach you, you know, a study like this is, it's not intimidating to someone who has not learned about God or church. Uh, it, it helps you to ease in with a very fun subject where people would really listen and pay attention to you uh, because God wants you to be able to reach everyone, okay? What I teach here, I could go, you know, to Africa or Timbuktu, as they say, and teach it, and people would still benefit from it in the same way. That's the way the Word is. The Word of God is supposed to be able to reach any and everybody, and you're supposed to have a good balance of teaching so that wherever God sends you, you got something in you that can reach that person. Because God is not going to send you to someone that you're not qualified to minister to. So that's something to learn. Because a lot of times people, you you know, let the devil make you afraid. Well, that fear is, is, is fruitless. You don't even need to be afraid. Because God's not going to put anybody before you 
that he hasn't equipped you to be able to reach. All right, so again, orange is a universal color. Uh, it represents the color of fire. Okay, and, and not in the likeness of yellow as much, more in the earthly sense, a realm of nature. So it uh, represents a universal mind, which is what I'm just now telling you. You want to have an open mind. That's why religion is no good. You know, guess what? When people ask you what religion you are, they're really trying to find out, you know, what you're about. They think they can find out about you through your religion. That's so foolish because religion doesn't tell who you are at all. Uh, it may tell you where you, you know, where you stopped. Because that's the way I see it. It's where most people stop. You know, they get saved or they get in the church and they go no further. And they can't reach anybody but those people that they're around. That's not universal. That's very limiting. So, uh, worldwide, that's what it means. You, your universal mind, you're worldwide. You're always thinking. You never uh, hear criticizing. You, you, you just don't deal with that because criticizing excludes. Okay, well, that person would be so-and-so if they weren't. They, well, you're excluding. Remember, universal includes. It doesn't exclude. Okay, expresses God's smile in his covenant with man and the earth. Okay, from me to you, so to speak. This color reveals our Heavenly Father's favor on our lives. Isaiah 24 and 15. Wherefore, glory in the Lord, in the fires, okay, even the name of the Lord, God of Israel, in the isles of the sea. So it's a glorious color as well. And orange, you know, it's very bright. It's very, you know, attracting. Genesis 9 and 13 says, do set, I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. So that's, again, because, uh, you know, when you look at that rainbow, one of the brightest colors is orange. Okay, the word bow is used in Genesis 9, 13 for rainbow. It shares the same Hebrew word for bow your knee. The rainbow is bow. It represents the realm of worship uh, to God. It says, uh, let me just finish reading, or bow down, and the same Hebrew word as in bow and arrow. Okay, so again, uh, as in Second Kings, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. Okay, deliverance happens when we bow, as in covenant, like the rainbow. Okay, I always say the way up is down. Learn to bow those knees, humble yourself before God. He'll bless you really good. All right? Uh, so again, it, it signifies to God that I receive your covenant. Okay, it's a humbling. And remember, he is the king. And when you come into the presence of a king, what's the first thing you do? You bow. Okay, so always understand that and see that likeness in that rainbow and in that orange, that universal. So Genesis 37 and 3, we're moving right along here. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and made him a coat of many colors. Again, these are one of the first mentions of colors. You'll find them in Genesis where the Lord again is showing his favor, his approval, okay? Uh, colors symbol of God's favor, okay? And Jacob, Israel, it, he favored Joseph with this beautiful coat of colors. God favors you. And, but also remember, that coat of colors brought him a lot of opposition. And a lot of times you think God don't like you when bad stuff be happening. No, it's God loves you. He favors you. And favor attracts trouble. And you need to realize that. And stop thinking it's always something bad about you or they, they don't like you. You know, what? Joseph didn't do anything to his brothers. Okay? They just couldn't stand him because his father loved him. Take that as a lesson to you. Okay? So you realize how much your father loves you, okay? He favors you, all right? It's a symbol of God's favor to his children. Favor is not fair, as they say. You've heard that before. And it attracts conflict and opposition. And any time that you start getting it, don't think it's you. It's, it's your favor. Learn how to wear that coat, okay? Opposition can never stop favor. It can never stop it. God still loves you, and he will deliver you from everything free evil work. I don't care what anybody's scheming and coming up with and trying to do. You keep your coat of colors on and you wear it knowing that the favor of God is upon you and no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. 
okay? God will always bring color during hard times, okay? Favor is the expression of God, God's colors, okay? So add color with understanding. And sometimes when you're feeling bad, just put on a, a bright color. Put on something that you feel good in. Put on a color that will help you. Most people don't even realize that, you know, you know people who are, are depressed and have depressed, I guarantee you they're wearing a lot of dark clothes or clothes that don't represent who they are. Uh, when you're feeling bad, the last thing you need to do is put on something that you don't like. You need to put on some colors that will minister to your spirit and help you bring out. Remember, they have purpose. They really, really do. All right? You can go in a building and have... Uh, the, the wrong colors in that building and it'll make you like, oh, I can't wait to get out of here. And you don't even realize what it was. It was probably the colors. And I, I did a study ooh, years ago and I wasn't even doing it on this, but I did a study uh, when I was studying for um, my certification in, in childhood studies. And they were talking about how certain health or medical uh, wards and hospitals, certain colors they can never use. Because those colors just set off, you know, the chemistry of, of certain people and it causes them to really act out. So don't tell me colors don't affect. They really do. They're real. They're very alive. They're from God and they have purpose. But they're supposed to be, we need to use them to our advantage and, and, and understand the power that they have to help us, to bless us. All right. So again, orange is universal. Okay. You want to learn how to be what God wants you to be to everybody. Don't don't lock yourself, isolate yourself in a box. That's cutting off too much of your color. Remember, rainbow has way more than one color. Okay, and it's very well, wonderful to, to utilize each one. And and they have this power, okay, to to really represent you and God. All right, the color green. Look at that. We're getting through these really good. So green represents spiritual life. And all its privileges. Okay. It stands for fruitfulness and beauty, which breeds strength and blessings. Okay. So naturally, green is recreational because you go outside and everything is green. It's one of those earthly colors like brown, mostly brown. In fact, the earth is mostly brown and green. It really is. All right. It's a recreational color. And it tends to distract in business matters, okay? Uh, it, in other words, because, you know, if you got a lot of green, you, you're not going to be as, as focused on business as you need to be. That's why if you go to recreational things, it's all green. It's all green. It, it just stirs up the, the liberty inside of you to be free, all right? It is a surrounding color. It really is. I mean... It's so wonderful because even in the winter time, you got evergreens and pines and, and holly trees and things that are always green and they never turn brown. All right. It, it's a surrounding color which secures uh, to everlasting. So it's like one of those forever colors. And the thing about brown and green, they are forever colors. They will always be. You say, well, the earth is going to be destroyed. Yeah, but it's going to be a new heaven just like there's going to be a new earth. There's, you know, new heaven, there's going to be a new earth. So it's one of those uh, forever colors it will always be. So whenever you see green, you see forever. Okay, you see something that's forever and will always be. Psalms 52 and 8. Psalms 52 and 8 says, But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. And that is likened on to understanding uh, the everlasting mercy of God. It, it, green is likened on to the mercy of God. His mercy endures forever. In fact, every day when you wake up, uh, to the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. Well, you wake up every morning, there's green. You, you look out somewhere, you're going to see green. It's, it's a wonderful representation that the mercy of God is available. Uh, you feel like you need mercy, put on some green. You know, it, it's, it's just wonderful because it also brings about a certain level of peace. If, if I know God's mercy uh, is, is with me, then, yeah, I mess up. Everybody does. But I don't have to carry that around. I can really just rest in the mercy of God and, and know 
you know, that, that mercy endures forever, no matter how much, you know, because sometimes we're striving, we're trying to get it right. We don't, nobody gets up, as my saying, nobody gets up every day and starts plotting how they can, you know, just blow it, just mess up and do what, nobody plans to do that, but things do happen. And I think it's wonderful to know that forever this mercy is available. Just like the color green is available, you can go out and find green anytime. Mercy is there. It's available. You can find it anytime. It's always there for you. And you need to apply it, utilize it. If you feel like you're being picked on or you're beat up and you're just wore down, then go out, take a walk, you know, in the park. Go somewhere where you can literally just feel the mercies of God flowing through the life of this beautiful color green, the, the recreation of it, the liberty of it. It's all there for you. And it does. It really promotes, you know, wellness. It promotes feeling better. I mean, it, it promotes life, and that's what it's supposed to do. You know, I've always said that even in our eating habits, you know, our body is alive. We need to learn that you have to eat more live food than dead food. Now, what do I mean by, because we want a whole lot of meats and things and they're fine, don't get me wrong, it's good, but are you eating as much live food like greens and salads and vegetables and fruit, things that are alive, they have live enzymes, they go in and help your body to feel better, okay? It, it's a represents of life, green, okay? God's mercy is there for you. Utilize it, use it, okay? And feel better, <laughs> All right, again, Psalms 52 and 8, but I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. And it's important that they use olive trees because olive trees live like forever. You know, in, when we went to, uh, when I was in Jerusalem, and we went to uh, the Garden of Gethsemane, which is a garden of olive trees. Most people don't realize that, but that's what it is. It's a garden of olive trees. There are olive trees there that are close to 2,000 years old. You can find that hard to believe, but you look at them, you say, yeah, it's old. <laughs> But they, because they live forever, and, and when one part of it dies, a green sprout just shoots out, and it starts, you know, growing through that tree. So that's what he's saying. It's, it lasts, they last, these trees last forever, all right? I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever, okay? Psalms 23 and 2. He makes me to lie down where? In green pastures okay he leads me beside the still waters and i like that says he makes me because sometimes we don't have the sense to rest we just think we can go and go and go and i've ministered to people and said oh pastor if you just know how i'm just so tired i said well yeah you ought to be because you don't know when to stop you don't know how to take a break you don't know how to relax and you know, after a while, your immune system, it, it, it wears down. You know, you can say, well, I have faith. Well, you have faith and have some sense because they work together. <laughs> and you need to know when to take, you know, some time out. Okay? But be, a lot of times, because we don't, we, we don't, then he makes us to lie down in green pastures. He will make you have to. You know, I remember one day, I, out of the blue the car, I go start the car, the batteries in. And I just did not feel like bothering with it. I said, you know what? I'm just going to, you know, call it a day. I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm not going to do it. I'll get that battery fixed. I'll call AAA or something. Let them go. I said, but I'm not going to be bothered. And that's when it hit me. Yeah, you need to stay home anyway and just get some rest. Because otherwise, we don't know how to, you know, lie down in green pastures. And I mean, when was the ch just think, when was the last time you just, you know, went somewhere and just, I mean, just a, a one hour, just for one hour, and just sat and looked at creation, looked at nature, and, and thanked God for his creation because he really made it for us, you know, and, and just enjoyed the, the scene or the greenery and appreciate it, breathe it in, take it in. Your body really could use it. It really does need that, okay? I, I think green is probably one of the more important colors because it's a color of life. And when you understand how important your life is, God wants you well. He wants you healthy, okay? wants you to feel good about yourself. And so it is sometimes you're going to have to just say, you know what, today I'm just taking a break. Uh, sometimes you got to just turn that phone off because we got phones. 
whoever thought we would have our phones with us 24, uh, you know, 24 seven, you know, it's not like we, you know, we came out of the answering machine age where as soon as we walk in the house, we hit the answering machine button trying to catch up all our messages. And I mean, that's the, that's the dinosaur now of our generation. Because uh, now we don't have to miss a call. We don't have to miss nothing. It's like, you know, and, and it's amazing because this generation has more technology than any other generation. Yet we accomplish less than any other. Those who didn't have all this thing, they accomplished way more than we did. So it is something to think about. You know, think of the color green and the mercy of God. They both last forever. It's there for you. You know, when you pray, you know, you ought to thank God for his mercy. I thank him every day. I say, Lord, I thank you for brand new mercy today. And you know what's wonderful about mercy? I not only receive it, but I give it. You know, you can be so upset with somebody and think that, well, this time for me to just tell them what they need to know. Well, think about the mercy. Think about green. Maybe take a minute and just breathe in some green. And it'll help you to give them mercy. Give them the same mercy. We mustn't be the kind of people who only, you know, uh, think of mercy when we need it. The only time we think mercy is when we need it. And we never know how to extend it to somebody else. And everybody messes up. We just shared that a few minutes ago. I mess up, you mess up. We all have our mess ups. And sometimes we're so busy running, running, running. And we're just making a mess, a bigger mess of things and and. and by the end of the day, we've just made a big mess, but his mercy endures forever. So don't just receive mercy, okay? Learn how to give it, extend it, give somebody a break. Mercy is not something you earn or deserve. It must be given. And in most cases, it's, it's just the opposite. Of course, it, 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 it's, you know, they ought to get what they deserve. I've always said, if we got what we deserve, none of us would be here. And so the mercies uh, uh, is wonderful because you'll see mercy in green. So now tomorrow when you go out and you look at green, I want you to see mercy. His mercy endures forever. Lord, thank you for your mercy. I thank you for brand new mercies every morning. I not only receive them, but I give them. I extend it to those who need it. And it'll just help you to feel better. That alone will help you feel better. All right, I've, he's shown me the card. My time is just about up. The time goes by so quickly. We only have one, two, three, I think four. Let me do just one more. I think I got time for one more. Okay, because in the spiritual warfare book, okay, the colors, I think we have more colors in this book that yeah. I, in my book that I've written. Then let me just let me go to the back because <laughs> I think there's a. There are more colors in here. Yeah, they are. They are. So let me do at least one more so that next week when we come back, we can finish up. All right. But there are additional colors in the book that are not in our spiritual warfare book because they were, you know, written at different times. All right. So yellow. Let's do yellow and then we'll finish up there. Next week, we'll close out with the remainder of colors. All right. So yellow is the color of glory. Everybody loves yellow. It triggers excitement. Okay. It's prophetic and presenting what is new specifically for attention. And yellow is there. It's bright. It's kind of like the sun. You know, there's nothing like getting up in a bright sunny day. It gets your attention. Okay. Yellow is a fire color. It, it represents glory. Uh, there are angels that are represented in this color because they are called angels of fire. And they represent glory. There are specific angels that can minister before the Lord. They cry, holy, holy, holy. These are your fiery uh, angels. And they represent the glory of God. And it, it's very significant reading the description of what they look like. It, it's like no matter how many times you read it, you can't fathom in your mind what that must look like. They have these numerous amounts of wings and, and eyes and and, and legs and feet and it's just so amazing and 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 they're they're called fiery ones in one in one passage of scripture all right and, and so uh, again the glory glory equal empowerment glory equals empowerment so again 
it, it's a fire of, of it's a, a color of fire okay movement means you cannot put your finger on it meaning it's a, it's, it's a movement color. It, it, it's amazing to try to describe yellow because if you ever seen the, 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 the curtain auroras in um, I, I was watching a documentary and these people have traveled they traveled oh my goodness days and nights because they wanted to arrive at a specific, a specific mountain peak where they could see the curtain auroras and it, I'm sure you've heard of curtain aurora and there are these different colors but they're moving they're actually moving and each time it moves a different color it's amazing i tell you our god is a mighty god yellow is similar to that it's a movement it's a color of movement yellow is a direct representation of the shekinah glory from heaven okay fire from heaven is the fire of the lord and, that, and that's just amazing to me Ezekiel 8 and 2, then I beheld and lo, a likeness, and I'm emphasizing likeness. Okay, I'm in my book on colors. I'm sorry. Some of you are looking for that in this, uh, in our other spiritual warfare book. I just switched and I'm on page 32. Okay, so forgive me. I'm sorry. I just started without you. <laughs> sorry. Okay. All right, let me go back. Ezekiel 8 and 2. You should be on page 32 of your book on, on colors. It says, then I... I beheld and lo a likeness as the appearance of fire from the appearance of his loins even downward fire and from his loins even upward as the appearance of you see how it's moving downward and upward it reminds me of the curtain auroras where the color is because fire is colorful but it's moving it moves it shows the life of color in, in this, this brightness of yellow, okay? It uh, goes on to say, in the loins upward as the appearance of brightness as the color of amber. And behold, the glory of God, the God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the plain. All right, so it, again, how do you describe it? The, uh, the scriptures is describing it, I guess, is best when, you know, you're looking from a realm of flesh and you're trying to describe the glorious realm of God. You're always going to be short when, for words and, and how to describe uh, this glorious color uh, that that yellow literally represents. Okay, 8 and 4 of that same Ezekiel says, And behold, the glory of God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the Plain. So he's describing it according to the vision that he saw. Psalm 68, 13. We're going to finish up. Psalm 68, 13. Though, ye, though you have lien among the pots, yet shall you be as the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. That, that's just magnificent. That's glorious. Okay? That's the color of glory, of yellow. And when you imagine, again, what will that be like to actually see these in the realm of the Spirit or in the realm of God, uh, if you did see them, I don't think you'd have words to describe it. Again, so these are, are colors. Uh, I remember the, some of our dancers sometimes back, we were having one of our feasts, one of the feasts of the Lord, and it's just like they were dancing, but then when they took out the yellow flags and began flagging, those colors just release, just totally changed the atmosphere. And all of a sudden, just a, a realm of re worship and, and praise was just released and the glory of God just began to come in that place. It was just a, a marvelous moment. And because many of our teachings, you know, we have the opportunity to express what we're learning and actually experience. So then it comes out of the book from just being on paper to the experience in our life. And that's what God wants for us. He wants us to experience what he's given us, not just read or talk about it, but live it. So again, we're going to stop there because our time is, is up and uh, we want to take our time and go through the remaining colors when we come back. Uh, but already the colors that you have just, just take a moment and, and go through them again and then apply them. Again, white, you need victory. Put on some white. You know, wear a t-shirt, something, anything. It doesn't have to be fancy, okay? Uh, 
black. It's a realm of authority. If you want to leave a serious impression, black is the color of authority. When I first started ministry, I think every Sunday I wore black because, I, first of all, I wasn't, it wasn't like I was trying to convince anybody anything. I was trying to, you know, convince myself because it was so hard for me to accept and deal with the fact that God had literally called me to ministry. And I wore black because I needed to take myself serious. You know, if you don't take yourself serious, it's going to be very hard to take, uh, for others to take you serious. Uh, but again, the colors were tremendously, they helped me, and I, I was so blessed to be able to learn that because it helped me tremendously. And people do treat you differently. I'm telling you, when you dress certain ways in certain colors, people really do treat you differently. Brown, serve. It's to serve. I'm, I've gone to many restaurants and seen them have the brown uniforms on with the white aprons. And I've, I'm, you see that right now if you go out. Brown is the color of servitude. Again, orange, universal. Everybody should be orange, right? Forget about color, black. Orange. Everybody should be universal. Everybody should be orange because it means I can reach everybody, okay? No respect of persons. God can put me anywhere and I'm going to represent him and come through in shining colors, all right? Green, that wonderful recreational forever color, the mercy color, the life color, it will bless you if you would understand it and, 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 and just kind of bask in it. Like I said, go out tomorrow, you know, and, and hurry up for it snow because <laughs> after a while it's going to be all white. But that green will bring life to you. And I hope it'll teach you to start eating more green food. Now, there it is. I said it. Because we do. We should eat more live food than we do. <clears throat> and of course, yellow. We finished up with yellow, the glory color, the color of glory, the Shekinah glory that literally represents the presence and the glory of God. So we'll pick up on next week when we come back together. We're going to look forward to finishing up the colors. We've got some really different ones in, in our book. Again, bring your books because we'll want to be using your books. And if you have your books, you don't have to take notes. And those of you who are taking notes, I'm sorry if I went a little fast. Uh, you know, you can go to our website and watch this all over again. And, or you can get the books and you can have it for yourself. We're getting ready to pray. And uh, hopefully you are literally trusting the realm of the Holy Spirit. I can't emphasize enough how important it is. You know, I know I talk about the fourth dimension because it's the revelation that opens up my eyes. If you're still struggling and you're still hurting, it's because you haven't got the revelation of the Holy Spirit. When you get that revelation that He is real, that He is a real person, presence, third person of the Godhead body, and He's with me always, that Jesus knew exactly what He was saying. He would not tell me about something that wasn't real. It's real, and I need to start living and being uh, literally not only just in acknowledging him, but accountable to him. And, and don't insult him and, and act like you're you know, by yourself and you're on your own and, and you're panicking and carrying on. That's an insult because you have the presence of God Almighty with you always, always. How long? Even until the end of the world. So understand if I keep talking about the fourth dimension, the realm of the Holy Spirit, it's because the church has turned it into a religion. When I say the church, I mean not the real representation of the body of Christ, which is the church. But religious, religion, religion has turned it into, you know, just the practice of something and not, it's taken the reality out. And people are suffering, they're afraid. These are believers who are, are going through unnecessarily because they have not got the reality of the Holy Spirit and how real He is and how much He wants to help us and take us through. And if you would just take it seriously, just put all the religious thinking, all the self-righteous, He got nothing to do with that. It was never about religion. Uh, again, on Sunday, we look forward to sharing uh, what I believe is going to be the greatest Christmas story you've ever heard because it takes all the religion, the elements of uh, tradition and religion out and it tells you the real purpose so that you can start focusing on the right way of how God wants you to live and relieve you from some of the worry and some of the pain and all the suffering that you're going through. Amen? So we're getting ready to pray for you. Listen, you need to receive your healing. Don't wait on it. Receive it. Don't, don't listen to symptoms. Symptoms 
are lies from the devil to make you believe that God didn't heal you so that you'll go backwards instead of forward. You know what? You need to thank God every day. I don't care what kind of pain you're feeling, what kind of sickness or disease, whatever it is, don't let it conquer you. Remember, you have the Spirit of God Almighty living with you, inside of you, all over you, and He will make sure that you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that with His stripes you were healed. You just need to keep believing it. Don't back off. Faith comes by here. Keep listening to it. Keep hearing it. And know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're coming out better than when you went in because you're going to have to turn around and help somebody too. And a lot of times we don't realize that's why we go through what we go through so that we'll be able to help someone else. So in the strong name of Jesus, I, I encourage you and I urge you to take what you're learning. Don't turn it into religion, but begin to apply it to your life. And thank God for the difference that you are literally seeing, that you know that God is with you for real. It's not just some religion. So, Spirit of living God, we thank you now. We bless your name forever. We worship you. We glorify you. We're so excited for the word of God. We understand that it has total and literally domination over our lives. We want you to rule over our life. Lord, we don't just give you our heart. We give you our life. We want you to rule and super rule over us. Teach us your ways. Teach us your precepts that we might observe and do them in Jesus' name. Now bless every household, every family. We speak the word of God into your life and into your home. And in the name of Jesus, you are more than a conqueror. You will come out shining as pure gold. And the Spirit of the Lord is going to be with you and show you those things which are to come. In Jesus' mighty name, bless every household. Let the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow be upon you and yours. In Jesus' mighty name, to the glory of God the Father. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you tonight. We love you. We're lifting you up in prayer. Just know that every morning early on, prayers are being going, going up and being interceding for you on your behalf in Jesus' name. And we love to do it because it's what God has given us to do. And so know that whatever it is, it's about to be better than ever before. You will be victorious in Jesus' name. All right? God bless you. We bid you go in peace. Watch our services online on our website, IBM Video, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Shalom.